One of the best ways to improvise hipper solos is by using invisible 2-5-1s. Now you're probably wondering, what on earth is an invisible 2-5-1? Well, before we get into it, we should start by defining what a regular 2-5-1 is. So let's have some fun and go through this explanation memento style by working backwards from the one chord. All right, the one chord is the tonic, or as I like to call it, the destination chord. It's our target. It's where we want to end up. The five chord is the dominant chord. It has a whole lot of tension, which is eventually released when it resolves to the one chord. Now that's third. So if we're in the key of C, where C major is the one chord, that means that G major is the five chord, and the third of G major is B. Now, check this out. Here's a C major scale. Hear how that B wants to resolve up to C? That's the tension I'm talking about here. That B, that seventh scale degree, is literally referred to as the leading tone because it leads you back to a much more stable destination. By the way, if we make that G a G7 chord, we add an F into the mix, which also creates a heck of a lot of tension that's just begging to resolve down to E. So yeah, that five, that dominant, is a chord that wants to move. Anyway, let's talk about the two chord now. In the context of a 2-5-1, the official name of the two chord is the predominant chord because it prepares the subsequent dominant chord. If we use a volleyball analogy, the two chord is the bump, the five chord is the set, and the one chord is the spike. Or if you like the travel analogy, we can make this super simple by boiling down the two five one to just two parts. The two five is the journey, and the one chord is the destination. Now, what about invisible 